Hey, what's up, guys? This is Aaron Bennett here. Welcome to the Celsius AMA recap for August 20th, 2021. And if you have not subscribed to my station and you enjoy these videos, please hit that little subscribe button. Alex is joining us from the Hamptons again, and uh, he definitely needs to invest in some fiber internet because it's pretty darn blurry. So joining Alex, we have Zach as always, and also we have Nuke, the co-founder of Celsius. And Nuke is coming to us from Tampa, Florida, which I believe he lives there and they're building out a Celsius team there. And Alex is also saying that recently we had the 50th anniversary of the US dollar going off the gold standard. And Alex is saying that when the dollar became decoupled from gold, all the other currencies that were pegged to the US dollar also became more free floating currencies and turned into fiat money. And Zach said that fiat means by decree, basically a governing force tells you what is money. And Nuke then drops a solid dad joke saying that we went from by decree to now with crypto by decrypto. So Alex is saying that they don't give financial advice regarding how much of your dollars you should allocate to crypto. He said that some people say 1%, 5% allocation to crypto. Other people say, you know, 100% allocation to crypto. And he just says there's a lot of factors to consider. Your age, time horizon, how long you plan on holding these assets, your income, your risk tolerance, and all of these things that you need to consider. And Alex is saying that where Celsius comes in is they offer you a way to earn yield on these assets and also to help you not get hit with short-term capital gains by taking out loans rather than selling your crypto assets. So Nuke is saying that a lot of people in the Celsius community on Twitter were annoyed that they were like a day or a week late when releasing ADA or when offering some of these services. And Nuke just wants to reassure people that there's a reason that Celsius has been the safest and is the safest place to hold your assets because if they don't feel comfortable on a certain date releasing something, they won't, regardless of if that's the date they told the community they would. The safety and security of our assets and the longevity of the company is their top priority. So he's saying for ADA, it's a very complex blockchain. And the reason they had to delay it a little bit is because something was just slightly off with the structure of how Celsius and ADA were interacting with each other. So rather than releasing it before it was 100%, they are going to wait. So he said that they fixed this problem. They are now in the late stages of testing ADA again. And he says, or he hopes, late next week, this should be live. So there's a video that they're playing going over the swap feature inside the app. So that's the in-app swaps, pretty cool. So there is a live working version of the swaps like you just saw. Nuke says that was not from the marketing team, that was just screen captured by one of the developers. So Nuke said this is gonna be a slow rollout. They really wanna make sure everything is perfect before they release this uh, for everybody all at once. So one of the reasons it's rolling out slower is because you know making sure it's completely compliant legally 
that there are no fees on either end and that everything is just perfect before it launches to everybody. So Alex just said it's going to be launched to platinum members in California first. So that is pretty cool. That includes me. So I will definitely show you guys how this works when it comes live. So they're playing another video about California loans, which they launched, I believe it was last week, if I remember correctly. He said in the first week, 500 loans in California were, uh, were taken. So the first question is about US members swapping into sell token. So Alex said that they're still waiting on the courts to decide what's a token, what's a security. So unless you are accredited in the United States, you will not be able to swap in and out of sell token. The next question, are you afraid of the central banks or the current financial system trying to destroy or take down cryptos. So Alex's take is that the fact that they are trying to figure out how to tax crypto means that we are well beyond the point where they are trying to make it illegal or take it down. So Alex is making the comparison when he was working with voice over IP, there is basically a fight over voice. Who controls voice? Now we are seeing the same battle between the banks and cryptos with who controls money over the internet. So Alex mentions that Celsius has over $21 billion in assets right now. Somebody asked if Bitcoin would reach 200,000 bucks, would Celsius be able to keep up with the rewards and will the rates change? So Alex starts out saying that the yield that they generate and that they pay us has to do more with the volatility of the asset and not with the price of the asset. If there is no volatility and therefore institutions and you know big players don't wanna borrow, it doesn't matter the price. Uh, the price could be 2000 or $2 million. If there is no demand for borrowing, then that leads to paying us less money and Celsius earns less yield. So somebody asked, are there gonna be limits to how many times you can swap per day or how large those swaps can be? So yes, there will be a daily limit that resets every 24 hours for swaps. So Alex is saying that the entire Celsius community and the ethos of Celsius has to do with you acquiring more coins, you acquiring and, and increasing your stack of crypto, not selling it. So included in this swap are basically limits and guidelines to help you know, people not just sell other crypto, swap too many times and, and completely change their hodling behavior. So the reason why they are rolling things out slowly is they wanna see the behavior of the community. They wanna see how much are people swapping, how much that changes the net inflows or you know withdrawals out of the Celsius wallet. They wanna slowly see how this will affect the, their, their entire business. And again, Alex says that their goal is to help everybody reach financial independence. So if doing these swaps, they think that it's going in the wrong direction, that people are now speculating and trying to time the market and basically using it like an exchange. You know, they will want to adjust things to make sure that they're still helping people in the way that they want to. So here's an important question. What are the weapons hanging in the background for Nuke? If you're listening to this on the podcast, you can't see. And if you don't know, I do upload these to a podcast that you can access on Apple Music, uh, Spotify, and basically anywhere that you access podcasts. And there is a link to that in the description. So video or podcast form, you can check these out every week. So the first weapon he's describing is a machete that he said his sensei brought him. And now he's pulling out a sword. So Nuke is a black belt in Kempo Karate. And he's also very experienced in jujitsu. So he is a walking weapon that has actual weapons on the wall. So don't mess around with Nuke. Somebody asked, will your loyalty level matter for the swaps, like calculating the spread, for instance? So Alex said that, no, it won't help you because they're already not charging any fees. So you can't, you know, get a discount on zero. But Nuke said they may change or play with the limits depending on what loyalty level you are at. So somebody asked about staking and lending NFTs. Alex said that right now there is no market for lending out NFTs. Alex said that in the future, you may be able to take a loan against your NFT, but the issue is liquidity and is there a market for it? So if you, for example, default on that loan and you don't pay it back, can they go and basically liquidate your NFT? Like, is there a market to sell it if they need to? So somebody asked, will they be adding Solana? And Nuke is going through basically how difficult it is to add 
an entirely new blockchain to Celsius. There needs to be the MPC rails with fire blocks active. So he says, most likely, if they continue to be a top crypto asset, then eventually they will be able to add a Solana and other coins like that or other blockchains and projects like that to Celsius. So Alex is talking about how people from government are joining some of these crypto companies. And he's saying that this is a good thing because you want people with government connections to help crypto adoption. So somebody asked Nuke, what is MPC? And he's saying it's a cryptographic solution where you can send crypto without actually having a key. So it breaks the key into several pieces. And basically, if let's say two out of three people who hold a shard of this key come together, they can create the transaction. So he says the difference is that unlike cold storage, where if somebody gets a hold of that key, they can steal the crypto. With this, nobody can actually see the key. So he says there is no private key. So there is not one person or there is not one place where the private key or the 12, 24 word mnemonic phrase is stored. So he said that Celsius is one of the first, or I believe he said the first company to utilize MPC in the way it is now. Somebody asked, will the swap function work with HODL mode turned on? And he said, no, it will not. So they're going over some news stories, Cointelegraph saying that the price of Bitcoin may double. Basically, Alex and Nuke say that these places that they have the news, you know, when the price is going up, they say it's going to go higher. When it's bearish, they say it's going to go lower. So kind of don't really necessarily listen to this stuff as gospel. So what Alex said, which I agree with, is when looking at the future price of Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever, you really have to look at the adoption curve. Are more people joining and are more wallets being opened? So he just mentioned that Coinbase is adding $500 million of Bitcoin to their balance sheet. So somebody asked regarding the cell that was hacked on liquid and sold, uh, how was Celsius exposed to that? So Alex wants to make it very clear that these were not Celsius's coins, nor were uh, the Celsius customers, their assets uh, actually hacked or stolen or whatever. This is just on liquid. He does say that obviously people did get affected by this, and we're just waiting to hear what Liquid decides to do. And they also clarify that Liquid Earn, the way of earning yield on Liquid, was not affected by this hack. So Nuke is saying that when something like this happens, even though it wasn't Celsius that got hacked directly, it does affect them and the team in the sense that they are trying to learn everything they can from this. From a security standpoint, they will be blacklisting any hackers' wallets or connected wallets. And Nuke is saying that he and the team were staying very, very close to the story and monitoring everything just to see if there are any secondary effects. So somebody asked, how come you are so much more transparent than the banks? Why not just keep everything like the banks have it, which is very secretive? So Alex is making the connection that, you know, in the past, we used to trust the news like 20 or 30 years ago, whereas now for good reason, there is some distrust with some of this information that we get. He's saying that decades ago, we used to bank with small banks that we knew people who work there and uh, they were very trustworthy. And now for good reason, like what happened in 2008 and all these bailouts and all this lying, people have a distrust of banks. So Celsius is trying to create just a new level of transparency and a different kind of institution that people can trust. So here are the weekly stats. We have $237.1 million of net inbound transfers and over 22,000 registrations. And this is the daily stats for August 19th. We had $34 million of net inbound transfers with over 3,000 registrations. So one thing that they do is they will share negative numbers if they come up. So by sharing these daily stats, Alex reminds people that there was a day where there was a loss, meaning they had more outbound transfers than inbound transfers. So they had a net negative uh, loss or their AUM essentially went down for that day. So part of the transparency of Celsius is sharing the good and also the you know, quote unquote, bad days. So Nuke just said that they're working on a Bitcoin conference in Tampa, Florida, where he lives. 
He says it's not going to be as big as Bitcoin 2021, but he is looking for potential volunteers. And he said it will probably be happening this November. So somebody asked Nuke, will you be working at Celsius until retirement? Nuke is starting out saying that obviously Celsius is incredibly rewarding, but it is a lot of work. It's like running a marathon full speed, he says. So he's also saying that how many times in your life can you really, really impact and change the world? And he really feels that Celsius can truly improve millions of people's lives, helping people earn more financial education, unbank them from predatory banks. And he really feels a deep sense of uh, purpose and obviously passion working here. All right, guys, that is it for the AMA recap. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my station if you dig these every single week. And uh, links below for products and services that I use. Uh, Celsius does not pay me to do these uh, updates, and they do take a few hours to actually do. So any support would be really, really awesome if you would like. Don't need to, but links are below if you want to. Alrighty, so that's it. Till next week, talk to you soon, and bye for now.